you will lose money, you will lose respect, you will lose dignity, you will lose integrity, you will lose sleep, you will lose how your body feels, how you look because of the psychological trips that trading is going to take you on. And welcome back to another TFT interview. Today I have the pleasure to host Ugo, who comes from UK. Welcome, Ugo. Thank you very much. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. So, hey, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what got you into training? Um, so, again, my name is Ugo. Like call myself Ugo, Ugo the Eagle, because that's what Ugo means in my language. Mm -hmm. It means the Eagle. Um, I got into training in 2020 mm -hmm. uh, it's been a roller coaster of a ride to be honest um i joined in this network marketing company and as you know i've been interviewed before so i'm sure a lot of people know the company i'm talking about um yeah we have started, a couple of traders who have started there yeah so i started there um and i learned a few things and i'm not going to lie to you like if people more people would use the actual education, they would have learned something. So I never knocked that company. I'm not with them anymore, but I did start my journey with them. Mm -hmm. um, and after some time there, I made profits, lost more, more than I made based off my fault. And um, I think the biggest thing in trading is accountability. It was never anyone else but me, right? So it was my over-leveraging, my fear, my greed, mm -hmm. everything possibly do wrong i did wrong um so i took a break from forex trading and i went into binary options mm -hmm. and i started learning through binary options because the problem with binary options is it has a lot of scam brokers mm -hmm. the whole concept of binary options is not bad i still do it till today mm -hmm. but the issue is it has a lot of scam behind it so what i did well with binary options was i got to understand price a lot more Mm -hmm. Because, of course, we understand that the markets are fractal. Yeah. So in binary options, you're trading in minutes. So I had to pay attention to the minute candles. Mm -hmm. One minute, the five minute, the 15 minutes. I had to get good at understanding what are the potential possibilities in these time frames to happen. Mm -hmm. And through that process, I was able to grow $800 to over 11000 Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, yeah, we, and I mean proper risk management. I, that was the first time I had ever done that. Um, and a group of people started to understand, to see me do this and wanted to learn how I did it. Mm -hmm. Then came the problem where I was using a terrible broker at that point. Mm -hmm. And I, it took me like seven months to get that get my 11000 out because they, they, they tried to make sure I didn't take the money out. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I learned a lot during that process, I switched brokers. But the most important thing that that process taught me with binary options was trading candles and understanding the time frames and seeing the same thing play out in every single time, time frame. frame. Mm. Right. And then understanding that the best setups were the setups that every time frame was showing the same direction. Play out to that direction. Mm. And um, that was, that was like, the biggest blessing to me to understand that. So I started um, I started taking challenges straight up. I went back into Forex understanding this. So I would take the same trade that I took on binary mm -hmm. Forex and I would see, I would profit in binary, profit in Forex mm -hmm. on the same trade. Um, and so I started doing that and then I got in love with gold mm -hmm. and I passed my first profit challenge with gold. Mm -hmm. I made my first $30,000 in one month from a prop firm mm. trading gold. Wow. And I got hyped. And of course, the next the next month, a lot of people in the trading industry, of course, know this prop firm. Um, the next month, I was up again, so profitable, but the prop firm shut down. Mm. So that hit me hard because stupid enough, a lot of us, that, a lot of us what we do is, we come and learn about the financial markets, which is cool, but we never actually learn about financial literacy. Mm -hmm. And I think no matter the industry you are, if you don't learn financial literacy in any form of the word, no matter how much you make, you would still be broke. Yeah. Because like, it's not about how much you make, it's how much you keep. Mm -hmm. So um, because of the, I would say the overconfidence in my heart, I thought that, you know, 
trading was the mind, was the goal. I could do anything. You know, I made 30,000 a month. I could do anything. Mm. I didn't, I didn't take into, um, I didn't take into cognitive understanding that there's a potential for something like a profit showing up or a broker going under or like the liquidity market going crazy for that month. I didn't take into understanding any of these things. I mm. had already spent the money before I got the money. Wow. Right. So, um, we put me into a terrible spiral, um, in deep debt, uh, cause I was living lavish, stupid. Um, so with that mentality, the worst thing I could do was going to profit again, going yeah. to trading again. Because getting into debt and thinking that trading would be my way out of debt was one of the worst things I could do. Mm. And I know people who claim to say that trading has got them, has saved them. Mm. You know, it saved them from the debt they were in and all that. But the truth is, that is 1% out of 99% of the population. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and I will never advise it. Yeah, I only know one person who had adapt and made it in forex, but yeah. yeah. So it's something that for most of the people, when you're in debt and you feel that financial pressure, then it's impossible to perform good on the markets when you're under pressure. It's very very few people that can handle this pressure and um, yeah and perform good on the markets. So all I did was I <laughs> I wasn't there. Wanted to trade my way out of debt and got into more debt. And it kept on going and I kept on getting into debt. And a lot of people looking well, from the outside looking in would be like, that that's stupid. Like, why would you do that? But it's very easy to say. Yeah. That's what it's called benefit of hindsight. But it's mm. always sensible when you're looking at it after it's already happened. Yeah. When you're in it, there is this, there is this overconfidence that is actually complete stupidity that actually makes you blind blind and mm. makes you think that you can so um i went into that spiral and it was until i decided you know what enough is enough i can't keep doing this yeah i have to go back to where i know which is let me first start from getting a job mm. let me work my ass out to pay pay my debt little by little mm. and when i am more confident because i have money coming in from my job a source of income yeah. Then I think about another source of income. Yeah. And then I can think about trading. And then I can think about going into prop firms. And then I can think about maybe getting a payout. Yeah. So that was the step by step process of me re reinventing my mentality and going as hard as I can. And it still affects me sometimes to this day. I um, can imagine. But it is is a fight every day. Trading is is a war. Mm. You have to go in understanding and willing to lose the amount that you're playing with because mm. um i know I, I have made a thousand a day and people message me and be like bro how do you make a thousand a day well all i can tell them is are you willing to lose a thousand a day mm. if the answer is no then you don't deserve to make a thousand a day mm. so why don't you play in your lane so that's why i started that's why i restarted my journey and um i decided i'm going to start with the little one yeah. It's, the Bible says, because I believe in, I'm Christian, I believe that, you know, man can, that cannot be trusted in little will not be trusted in much. So if I can't pass a 50K account, if I can't pass a 100K account, a 25K account, why do I think I'll pass a 400K account? Yeah. And if you pass, a, if you do happen to pass the 400K account, it could be a flip. Mm. And if you're not in this for the long term, then why start at all? Like, why don't you get spend $250 and show that you can pass a 50K account? Yeah. Get, uh, a, pro get a payout from mm. that. Then reinvest. Treat it like a business. Reinvest into getting 200K, 100K. Pass that, you know. Yeah. Build on that. Get profit from that. Then reinvest into getting 400K. And once you go through the journey the right way, you won't be drawn back. That's a really uh, good That's a really good advice. And uh, for example, even if I, I do give this advice as well to uh, like other traders, even if you do small adjustments, that's what I'm personally doing. Even if I do small adjustments in my strategy and I'm backtesting it, and then I see, okay, this is I see improvement with this little change that I've made then I, I will not go directly to the biggest one. It's better first try it out on the small one, like see if it's working. And then 
when you play with percentages, if you manage to like pass in, um, manage your risk management on a 5,000, 10,000, whatever, no, no matter what size the account is, then you can be able to do it on a 400, 400K or 500K or whatever you're planning to like take. Uh, so this is a really good advice, definitely. What was eye-opening for you? What was the aha moment in when you when you were in this uh, like situation of being in a deep depth and yeah. um i would say i listened to a few people um dave ramsey was one of them mm-hmm. um i don't know how many people know dave ramsey but i listened to him and his methods were <laughs> uh, he reminded me of my dad sometimes because like he was he was like you are very silly to be in the situation you are mm. um so i listened to him and i was like that's my situation right now mm. okay so how do i get out of this situation i have to make a plan because whoever doesn't have a plan plans to fail Mm. So I have to make a structure and believe that I can go through this structure. And after listening to Dave Ramsey, I also then listen. I, I read the audio book. Well, that makes no sense. You can't read the audio book. I listened to the audio book, sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I listened to the audio book of um, The Richest Man in Babylon. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and that book is very inspiring to me because I think everyone should either read it or listen to it. Mm. It's free. Um, they talk about how you can get away, get out of debt because debt is one of the biggest things that destroy people. Mm. It destroys the human being. It destroys the people around them. It destroys their family. People lose their marriages. People lose their kids out of their debt. Mm. And one of the the, the easiest ways to fall into debt is to fall into the debt cycle of trade. Mm. I think, I hope someone out there listening to me gets something from this because a lot of people are in this situation. Yeah. I know a lot of people who borrow money to invest in a trading pot and lost it all. Mm. I know people who invested in the, sec- the, the latest Bitcoin, whatever. Trend. Like, <laughs> The latest Bitcoin trend that they reached out to them on Instagram and said, look, and they lost money. People who, you know, they invested in all these shit coins, mm. which I did, lost money, mm. right? Um, I was in a coin, like, this is the crazy thing. I was in a coin, January 2021. I put in $400 and in a day, it went from 400 to 4000 But I didn't take it out. Why? Because I thought that I believed the whole so-called hype that it was going to go to the moon. To the moon. Everyone was rising. <laughs> Everything was going fact. to the moon. <laughs> yeah. All right, this is at 0.000001 right now. If it just gets to 0.01, I'll be a more time in there. <laughs> like, a lot of people say this, and we don't understand that. You know, you join all these communities, and you're in a community with somebody else, and all of you are hyping that coin. You don't understand that that is a pyramid scheme. Like coins are pyramid schemes. A lot of coins are pyramid schemes. A lot of people clown network marketing and all that. And but what you're doing as well is a network mar- is sort of a scheme. It's like you need somebody else to invest for you to make money mm. in that coin. Because if th- somebody else doesn't put money in, the coin is not going to go up. And if it doesn't go up, you don't make money. And you're literally in a battle. With somebody else in that community that you guys call, you, you think you're in a community or you're in a fellowship, all of that. You guys are in competition with yourselves because the moment someone takes their money out and the coin drops, all of you are going to crash. Mm. And for you to take your money out, you need to sell to somebody else in that community who's willing to buy at that price. Mm. And it's the basic law of economics. When there's a buyer and there's a seller, someone is winning and someone is losing. Mm. always is never going to be an equal share so you buying at a certain price whatever it is you're either making money or losing money and somebody selling at a certain price whatever it is is either making money or losing money so like all these things i started to re- study these things and i'm like i got so pissed at myself number one right? but at the whole community of trading and investing and everything going on yeah. but um i got to realize that this has always been the way the world works Mm. like we all look for the flashy things and the richest man in Babylon explained that broke it down in such a way that I was like okay I need to get out of every group I was in I I needed to unfollow everyone Mm. in the community that was talking about profits or making money flashy cars Mm. um, completely let go of everything Mm. and just start my journey again 
and I will lose on this journey. Um, just because I'm making this video right now doesn't mean I'm not going to lose next month. Mm. It doesn't mean I'm not going to lose in the next two months. Mm. But all it is, is I'm willing to go on that process by myself and grow with the truth that I learn every day. And whoever is on that truth journey with me would follow and we will see eventually where we get to. Mm step by step so that was my eye-opening at that price at that point yeah it has been a tough lecture for you but now now you know how <laughs> to do next time <laughs> yeah well did you join any other communities except the one that you mentioned or um it was more like um yeah learning by yourself the whole binary trading and back to um, after i left that community to be honest I, i followed a few teams here and there but i never joined anything else again mm -hmm. um because i just started i was so distrust distrusting of everything mm, I started adapting. Everyone and everything. yeah like i just wanted to you know go on this journey by myself and see what i find It's understandable. Would you like to share your screen and show us uh, our recent trade that you took and how you analyze the charts? Okay, that's something I'm looking at right now. Uh, these are my past entries on all these trades. So I'll be, what you're asking is like, you're going to cut this part out, right? Um, yeah, so I want to, I want to find, because I've not looked at the charts this week at all. So I want to find if I, there's any trade that I have taken that is actually has played into profit. So I can explain it. Because all these ones are what I have analyzed to take. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. well, of course, I use top-down analysis. Um, I used to, you know, so this is, this is, oh, yeah, this is the perfect trade to explain. Okay. All right. So I do, I definitely do top-down analysis, but I think the difference with me is I understand, I started to learn that on the lower time frames I got into, the less trusting I got about the trade. So a lot of people would be like, they were, like I know, you know, smart money traders and all this, like you want to get, you want to risk very little to gain very much, and which is cool. But at the end of the day, it's an ego move, right? I started to understand that that was very egotistical. And you, like you would be seeing people putting stop losses here and different places and i'm to be honest with you yes that could play out genuinely but if you just let the trade breathe a lot more you would get you you would win more of the time right so what i started doing was i wanted to learn how to hold trades and let them breathe so i would do the whole top down analysis analyzing from the day to the week to the four hour to the 15 minute but i'm trying to get the trend of the higher time frames. So if you look at this trade right now, this was a rally to the upside, right? And of course here, it came back down and all the consolidation thing happened here. But right here, this was the break. It broke this structure here to the upside, closed above that. So, you know, understanding analysis, you, you sort of know that it's going to come back here, retest that. That is, you know, you could call that an engulfing candle or institutional kind of whatever you want to call it so you can get in at this price and ride it and i could have got into this and rode it up all the way here which is more profit but the truth is there is this whole week right down here and i would be like if this is open here there is literally no candle right around this area so until it shows that it's not going back down here i, would, I don't want to take this trade and it showed that by again creating a structure in that little condensation here I'm breaking above it here where I drew that line so it was when it broke above this structure that I got my confirmation that alright cool this is probably gonna buy right and that's when I went down to the daily time frame and I love Fibonacci right I love Fibonacci because you I learned you could draw Fibonacci on any market and get an actual understanding of the market. This is just mathematics. It's just human understanding, human psychology. Doesn't mean that it's always going to work, but I would always draw my Fibonacci on any analysis just to give me an understanding of what's happening. Now, now I, I have three good levels, 61.8, 71, and 78.6, okay? So if I'm going to take a trade, obviously this is what I was going to draw it to. I'm going to draw from my low to my high. And why, now this is why I'm going to explain why I drew this. 
Now, I didn't draw here, and I didn't draw here. I drew from the bottom, because technically, until it broke out of here, it didn't form an actual high. It didn't form an actual high. So I drew it from that lowest point it went to. And bear this in mind, there are a lot of times you try and do this, and the market doesn't go back to your entry level. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with missing out on a lot of trades now. I'm very much okay with that. But if it does go back to my level, it's going to be very good. It's going to be very very clean of an entry. So I've got the stock RSI, right? And do I use it? Yes. I don't use the volume, to be honest. I, I This is there. It's been there on my trading view charts. Now, the thing with the stochastic is, they, I reason with it, it, it's sort of like common sense. I know that when it's at this level, oversold, overbought and something like that, yeah? But again, I understand the crossing. When it crosses to the higher points, I use it at the 80 and the 20s. People use it at 70 and 30s. I use 80 and 20s. When it crosses back down here, now I'm understanding that I needed to be looking for sales, right? But at the end of the day, everything is still going to have to be market structure because I have seen so many times a lot of people take trades because it's crossed down and the market keeps buying. So if this market structure doesn't play out to the stochastic, I'm not going to use it, right? And I prefer the stochastic on the higher time frame than the lower time frame, right? But to be honest, I enter any time frame I see the 71 play out. So on the Fibonacci, right? I don't execute on a certain time frame. However, I draw my FIB levels, and when it gets to that level, I want to see a bias to the buy or the bias to the sell if that's what I'm looking for. And whatever that time is, I just get in. I'm not looking at the time. I'm not looking at the close of the market, the open of the market, the um, the time frame. No, whenever it gets there, I get I get in. So I'm going to I'm just going to draw my fib on the high on the time frame I want, which is higher time frame, because I expect the market to respect the higher time frame. And once I once it plays out on that time frame, I'm just going to get in. The moment is here. That's it. So I don't I don't care when it got there, or what time frame it did anything on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I trade more swing. So I look at the charts at 3 p.m. UK time every day. So whenever the market plays out, it plays out. But when I sit down to look at the chart, it's 3 p.m. every day. That's it. And I set my alerts and I set my limits. And whenever it plays out, it plays out. No. Yeah, I'd like, I'm really not like, and which is one of the... the which is one of the issues of my current account, which is because I took the regular account, but I did speak to everyone. I'm going to change it to um, the swing account because if you're practicing risk management, it's, the leverage doesn't should not concern you, to be honest. And then I could hold the trades against the news, against whatever it is. That's why I don't really look at the volume and anything. Like if I think this market is going to buy, I don't care when it buys. I just sort of understand that it's going to buy. I've set my SL and my take profit, but I don't really set my take profit. I more set my SL. So I want to lose this amount. I don't care how much I get, but I'm willing to lose only this amount. That's it. And then whatever happens, yeah, I do. So I take partials at whatever time I feel okay with the amount I get, right? So I used to have a, a strong structure where I traded and I had a goal target. But the problem with having a goal target every day is you'll, you have to trade every day. And trading every day, there are situations that can happen in life. And you, if, you, if you don't hit your target that day, then you're emotional the next day. Because now you want to make whatever you make the day before. And the targets are nice, but targets in binary options are more possible than targets in Forex. Why I say this is because in, in binary, you already know how much you're risk, risking, how much you're going to get when you trade it. In Forex, all you can say is how much you're risking. Now, you could draw a one to two, and it takes four days for that analysis to play out a one to two. So I am only going to take partials when I am like, you know what, I like where this market has gone. I'm willing to break even, take a bit of money out, and then let it ride. Or if not, I'll just leave the trade. And whenever it hits the price I think it should hit, then I take it. Is your psychology the same when you trade binary options with Forex, or is there any difference? So with binary options, I think I have sort of, I think I have sort of got a lot better with my psychology in binary options because mm -hmm. it is 
easier to break down mm -hmm. what you're expecting. But I have come to realize that it's the same psychology for each, for both. Mm -hmm. But the difference is this. With binary options, you're always going to make less than you risk. Mm -hmm. Because that's the whole concept. You're making a percentage of your risk amount. Mm -hmm. In Forex, you can make people double what you risk. Yeah. So when I trade binary options, I have a chart that I impute every morning before I trade it. Mm. I know how much I'm going to risk, how much I'm going to lose, the amount my account should end in if it's a loss. Mm. And I trade binary options and I take maximum three trades a day. Mm. Maximum. So if I lose two, I'm done trading. And this is this whole concept is for those who day trade as well. If you're trading in a day, if you sit down every day to get into the markets. I hope, I think this should be good for you, whether it's Forex or binary options. Because um, I, I heard someone say that the human mind cannot make more than two to three emotional, rational decisions every day. Mm. The moment you start getting into the fourth, the fifth, then you're it's not... You're over no longer trading you. and emotions are involved. <laughs> no matter so, if it is winners or losers. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether it's a win or it's a lo mm. loss. So what I do is this. If I take the first trade and I win, I'm going to take the second trade. Mm. If I lose the second trade, I'm going to have an opportunity to take one more trade. Mm. If I win or I lose the third trade, I don't care, I'm done. If I lose two back to back, I'm done. If I win two back to back, I'm done. Mm. And I'm trading between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. If I don't see anything play out between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m., I'm done. Mm. It's so important. I'm yeah, I'm done. Like, I'm literally cl closing my laptop. And another thing about binary is I only trade it on my laptop. Mm -hmm. So the moment my laptop is closed, locked down, is done. But the thing with Forex, we carry our phones a lot. And I always used to notice this. When I traded on my phone, I lost more mm. in Forex. Because you can't see the whole chart on your phone. Yeah. And you continue looking at your MetaTrader every five minutes. It's right here. You're addicted to your phone. So it's on your hand every minute. Mm. So you can literally get in and get out of trades by clicking one button. So if you start noticing that you're entering trades on your phone, analyzing on your phone, it might be the phone that's your problem. Mm. So I stopped analyzing on my phone completely. So if I don't have my laptop, let's say I have a busy schedule that day, so I don't have my laptop to analyze on the laptop to see a bigger picture, mm. I don't trade that. I so always, it's those little things. Yeah. I, yeah, I always do it on the, on the, on the laptop. <laughs> never, yeah. never phone. Because uh, oh, as I you said, like we have phone. access to the phone all the time and yeah. you can be emotional and do things much yeah. quicker on the phone wherever you are. And, yeah. Well, the reason why I'm saying this is for people, like I know a lot of people who, who started their journey trading signals. Mm -hmm. So they had to be on their phone, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. They had to. So they had to get the information in their phone and then they go and check it on their phone and everything was done on the phone. Mm. And that even ruined them more. It did for me. So I reduced my my understanding, my trading on phone completely. Mm. Right? I think it's very... If you want to, the more professional you make this, the more professional it becomes for you. Yeah. Right? So you have a place where you sit down, you have your laptop set up, you have your decks, you have everything, you're looking, you're analyzing, you have your set step by step. You know you're going to look at the news. You know that if you're trading a regular funded account, you want to not be in a trade two minutes before and after the news. You you, you analyze everything. Yeah. When you get into the trade. Mm. But if you're on the phone, you could be thinking of, okay, let me analyze this right now. But then you get a message from an ex and then you're like, Raw, all right, cool, let me text. <laughs> And before you know it, something has happened and like, yeah. a lot of things happen and you get so emotional about it. Then you go back to that trade. Distracted and you, you don't even know what you're doing <laughs> at the end. You're not so even aware. Less distractions you can have when you're trading, the better for you. Yeah, that's true. What advice would you give to new traders that are just getting started? The first thing I'm going to say is this, because... I have a lot of people message me and like, bro, I want to learn from you and everything. So I'm going to tell people what I tell my people. So the first thing is, what do you do for a living? If the answer is nothing, you should not be trading. Mm. You should not use your savings to trade. Right? That's off the bat. So mm. get a job. I will never make trading my only source of income. Never. 
Mm. Even if I start making a million a month. Why? Because the more you are idle, doing absolutely nothing, the more risk for you to lose. Mm. Because an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So the first thing is, what do you do for a job? You need to have a source of income. Mm. One or two, at the very least. You need to have a source of income. And then the second thing I'm going to say is this. I'm going to... I'm going to um, break it down like the richest man in Babylon broke it down to my understanding, mm. right? So when you create your source of income, you decide you want to learn, you want to start trading, you get a job, you know how much you're making from that job. You should leave off 60% of your job after tax, of course. 60%. If you can afford to leave off 60%, cool. If you've got debt and anything else, whatever that is, Eating into your lifestyle. Let's talk about debt. If it's 20%, should be going out to debt every month. Then you're left with 20%. Mm. You should always be saving 10% of your income every month. Just put it out there. Just put it autom- okay. automated every month. Yeah. Now, the remaining 10%, if you've not learned anything in trade, if you've not learned anything in trading, the remaining 10% of your income should be put into getting an education. Mm. The moment you believe the education is enough, take that 10%, restructure it, repurpose it into a trading account mm. and go live after you've got an education. Go live. The reason why I say go live, not demo trade, is... On demo, there are no emotions. <laughs> <laughs> And you will never see someone like let's say let's say the average income in UK is two thousand pounds a month, mm. right? If we break everything down, sixty percent of that is one thousand two hundred out. Twenty percent into all the debt you've got, which is four hundred dollars out. So you're left with four hundred dollars. Mm. Now two hundred dollars, two hundred pounds. Sorry, two hundred pounds is what you've got left to invest into your education. That's all you should invest into your education that month. Mm. Now, the moment you think you're okay enough to get into trading, actually trading, that £200 should be what you should fund your live account with. Mm. But there is no demo that has a £200 demo account. So if you can only afford £200, why are you demo trading a £10,000 account? You can't afford it. So you don't have £10,000. So there's no point to start demo trading £10,000 because you think, oh, right, I woke up this morning and I made two thousand dollars well you can't do that with your 200 pound account so start with what you've got put that 200 pound into your live account and practice risk management Mm. on that 200 pound now for those watching this of course then you understand what challenges are the first thing i would tell you to do when you eventually i'm going to try and put figures to these things so it doesn't it must not be exact but i hope it helps people yeah if you can grow your trading account, your live trading account by 100%, that means you have a £200 trading account and you turned the £200 into £400. Mm. Then what you're going to do? Now, I don't know if TFT have this now, or if they don't, I think it's something they should do, which is the free trial. Because I know FTM will have it. Mm. Right? You do the free trial. You can pass a challenge on the free trial. Now, the amount, how much are you going to use on the free trial would be from your trading account. To take out, if you've got $300 that you've grown, that's what you're going to withdraw. So you know that $300 is going to get you a 50K account. Mm. Go and do a free trial of a 50K account. Pass it. The moment you pass it, you know that you can do this. Withdraw from that your live account. And get a challenge. (laughs) Yeah. Of how much? 50,000. Mm. When you pass that, get a payout, reinvest that into 100K, 200K, whatever the payout was, yeah. and then start like that. Well, you see, this is going to take a journey because just to pass the challenge is going to take you 30 days. Mm. And the second one would be how, how, however long it takes you. But it's going to take you, in between, it's going to take you at least 120 days. Mm. All through that time, you're learning, you're putting in the work, and you're studying. And guess what? You've not lost anything. You've not. If you try and get into the, like, oh, but bro, I want to make money quickly. You're, talk, you're telling me to wait six months. <laughs> you want to make money quickly, get a second job. Yeah. Don't start trading. I'm telling you, because that 1% story you're listening to, the, the, the rags to riches story that the YouTuber is selling you, or whatever, I beg you, don't listen to it. It's not because a get-rich-quick scheme as it's represented. Like, oh, you see someone telling, I quit my 
my my job for forex but he mm. posted that video on youtube that video had 200,000 views of course i'm going to quit my job if my videos do 200,000 views <laughs> youtube is going to pay me yeah so already he has a, another stream of income Mm. And you you don't have YouTube, you don't have Instagram, you're not making any money on social media. You're just trying to get make ends ends meet. Yeah. And you listen to someone who's got that life. Mm. That's not how it works. I'm I had got the life of a someone who's got a job. We're moving every day to make ends meet. That's how you that's the regular type of person. That's the type of person that needs to follow a journey. Yeah. No, I told you I listened to Dave Ramsey. They did a they did a survey of thirty thousand multi millionaires, and the the average multi millionaire made their millions in around when they were forty five. Mm. It takes time for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Nothing is quick. Like honestly, and then when you structure it and you have peace of mind, if you've got peace of mind, everything else can flow. Yeah. Because you will lose, you will lose money, you will lose respect, you will lose dignity, you will lose integrity, you will lose sleep, you will lose how your body feels, how you look because of the psychological trips that trading is going to take you on. Mm. And even eventually, when you then finally make all that money after that, hard journey you've lost your weight you don't look good anymore your psychological mental state is messed up mm. you've lost your family you've lost the respect of your wife or your father or whatever you've lost the integrity of people that you've been owing for the last two years so you not you then get a million dollars then what then it's not going to change who you are at that point mm. you've gone through all that suffering for what but if you break it down and go slowly you know that only 10% of what I've got is what I'm going to risk every month so I can still be alive next month and be calm to do this again. Yeah, That's how I think everybody who wants to get into this trading journey. Yeah, that's a really, really good insight, really good advice for sure. Because many people are, as you said, like blind from everything that they see on social media. And uh, we need people that are telling the truth that that's not the real picture. <laughs> telling you, man, like, you yeah. see everyone like, you know, when they when people start here, all these guys on social media, they start here, oh, you never pay post losses. Then they go and post one loss, but then ten more times they are making a million dollars every time. They show but results like, from them accounts and <laughs> and awesome. they get the views and YouTube pays them. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, they get the views and then YouTube pays. And no dent on them. If I got what they've got, of course I'll do it. Mm -hmm. But Again, I do believe that you could get those views and you could get that truthful level of success mm. telling the truth. It's just going to take a longer time. It's genuinely just going to take a longer time. Yeah. But when you get there, guess what? It's it's stable. It's yeah. yeah. The one is taking you back mm. because you see, you you know people who are not about this life genuinely in recessions when when things hit. And all their subscribers don't have time to watch YouTube so they, because they are at work, so their views go down. Or they don't have time to pay for their subscription because no one is making money, nobody is trading. Then guess what happens? Because he's told so many lies. Guys, I was in network marketing space. You see these people who were claiming to make 100000 a month or whatever. Now everything closes down. Boom. Just like that. Mm. What then happens? They don't. They, they've created such a figure of themselves larger than life. So the, the type of shame in them to go out there and just apply for a job to save their family's lives, they can't do it. Mm. So they start jumping from one scam to the other scam to the next scam because they need money. They are broke, beyond broke. Yeah. They can't go back to a job because they are scared of people laughing at them. Mm -hmm. When you get to that level, you know that you've ruined yourself. Because the moment you, to live up to these Instagram lifestyles, the moment you make a hundred thousand, you have to start living in some mad house that's already three thousand a month to, to to continue living that lifestyle. You have to drive this terrible this car that you can't afford because just because you can buy it doesn't mean you can afford it. Mm. Then you start doing crazy things. And then you see people who are making a hundred thousand a month living from hand to mouth. Mm. Because they, they they're really not doing anything but living off that lifestyle to sell you more courses and sell you more books and sell whatever they're selling. Yeah. And once everything goes down, 
Yeah. You don't want the to truth. The truth is coming out sooner or yeah. later. So, guys, I'm telling you, all I'm telling you is the truth now. Mm. Because as I said, like, I'm no special person. I have people who, like, I teach and all that, but they know. They know when I lose. They know when I win. They know I'm not special. They know I do. I go to work. I'm, I'm working a job. Mm. I'm grinding for my family and I'm trading. And whenever I'm doing this, I'm telling you, this is what I'm doing. This is the honest truth of what we're doing. Yeah. Go do it. Too. Mm. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to anyone else. All right? So yeah. I can't yeah. say it's really good that you shared it with us. Any last words that you would like to share? I think if you, I've said a lot about... Yeah, the... <laughs> last words, I, I think I'll say uh, to make this interview for me wasn't to brag about how much I made. In fact, I made a withdrawal. It's all nice and good, but um, it's just to get this message I've passed across to pass out there. Yeah. Um, but I am not ecstatic about the withdrawal it's not a, it's not such a huge thing you know if i go to work and grind i could make that at the job as well so it's not about that it's not about the amount that you make from trading it's about the belief that you can see someone like you making that so mm -hmm. guys if i can make it you can make it anyone can make it if they put the time in yeah. right um slow and steady wins the race and i want to see everybody at the top because trust me the bottom is way too crowded yeah let's get Thank you so much for your time and being here and sharing your interesting story that definitely is going to give lots of, uh, uh, yeah, pe people are going to get lots of uh, good insights from your story and hopefully take the advices so that they won't make the mistakes that you've been through. I pray they do. I yeah. pray they do. Thank you very much. Thank you so time. much. Yeah. Yeah. that's all from today's interview it's been such a, an amazing one so don't forget to hit the like button subscribe hit the notification bell and show us some love in the comments down below good luck with your trading and until next time